Hey guys, welcome back. In the last tutorial, we looked at AutoKeras for structured data classification, meaning you have an Excel file with a whole bunch of columns, each column representing a different attribute or feature. Use those to uh, fit a model and then predict the outcome. It can be malignant and benign uh, when it comes to cancer, breast cancer, the example we looked in the last tutorial. And by the way, if you wonder how to install AutoKeras, please look at the video number 169, the one before this one, uh, I mean the one, uh, not before this one, but the one before that one, okay? Two videos before this, uh, where we talked about how to install AutoKeras. Again, the summary of AutoKeras is it makes machine learning easy, accessible to everyone without uh, the need to tune hyperparameters and everything, but it can be a bit slow. In this example, it will be a bit slow, so you better do this on Colab if you want uh, your system to be free to do something else, okay? So now let me jump into actual uh, code. So uh, first thing first, I would like to show you the code from our video number 143 when we talked about multi-class classification this is where we downloaded the CIFAR 10 data set why 10 because we have 10 classes airplane automobile bird and blah 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 all the way to truck and whatever I'm showing it doesn't matter what uh, type of problem you're using it should actually work and the great thing about AutoCaris is it looks at your data it's like okay you are uh, you have this x and you have this y that you're trying to predict so based on that these are the models right so that's the best thing about AutoCaris uh, because you don't have to think about okay how what is the depth of this dense layer what is this and what is that and all that kind of stuff okay and uh, uh, to be frank with you, the image data, this this type of classification, uh, I'm uh, uh, with these images literally trying out for the first time in uh, while recording the video. So I'll be a bit surprised too, because I have done the other one where I have seen dense layers, but here I'm hoping it puts together some convolutional layers, right? I mean, it only makes sense to do that for uh, image-based uh, uh, deep learning. Okay. So uh, this is the video from, I mean, uh, sorry, code from last time. And uh, we imported a bunch of Keras uh, layers like convolutional batch normalization. And of course we downloaded the CIFAR 10 dataset. I'll go through this in a minute, but just quickly going through. And um, one thing we did the last time was we used image data generator to augment the data. Now I haven't found any documentation in terms of AutoKeras using augmentation, data augmentation. Uh, that's because AutoKeras is relatively new and it's still evolving pretty fast. I'm pretty sure by the time in a couple of months, uh, maybe by the time you're watching in a few uh, few months, maybe there is a way to do that. But for now, at least I'm not aware of how to do this. So we'll skip this step. And but more importantly, have a look at this. We tried sigmoid activation. We tried. ReLU and we put together again convolutional layers and dense layers and then we tried a few of these models. Hopefully we don't have to do that, but it'll take some time. Again, I cannot stress more on why, uh, especially for image classification. Uh, well, at least I expect it takes time. We'll find out right now, okay? Okay, so now let's get into exactly how to do this AutoCaris part. First of all, let's import our standard libraries, matplotlib, and uh, we, I mean, plotting is not a big deal, so we can do that if we want, but let me script through. We don't even need much of these, uh, any of these libraries, I believe, right? I mean, uh, sequential, we are importing, we are importing image data generator, we are importing batch normalization, we are importing all this stuff. Let us select all of these, control one. That means it comments all of these, well, on spider. Okay. We need this, keras.datasets, let's import CIFAR 10, okay? We are importing these data. Uh, if, you, if it's your own data, obviously you don't need to do that. And uh, let's uh, also import normalize and two categorical because we need to do that for data pre-processing. And this is the most important part, auto keras as AK. And uh, now let's extract or unpack our CIFAR 10 dot load data. The way you unpack is you, the first two variables it's going to unpack are X train and Y train and the next one X test and Y test. So when I do that, it should unpack that. This is very big data set. I think, uh, let's go ahead and look at the shape. Let's go and look at the shape, 50,000. Uh, that's a lot. I can use all of that and uh, 
But the problem is uh, it will take a long time to go through each of these training model. In fact, when I tried that, it started doing something. I, I killed it and I thought I might as well record video while doing it. Okay, so let's, uh, so, so immediately right after that, I added a couple of lines here to decrease the size of my training from 50,000 to just 1,000. The accuracy would be horrible, but it should make the point that, hey, this, this actually works. So what is the best way to actually pick 1,000? There are many ways. You can write your own code. You can do a bunch of stuff. I'm just further splitting this X train and Y train. You see, this 50,000. I'm just further splitting into test size of 49,000, which means by default, 1,000 would be the train size. Again, this is not the best way, but in the last 10 minutes, this is the best way I thought I should be using. So 49,000 and X train shape, 1,000, okay? This is wrong, 1K because I just literally copied and pasted and white rain hopefully should be 1K. Okay, there you go. Just with 1000 images, okay, still not bad. What do we need to do? First of all, you need to normalize because your image pixel values are all like 256 by, uh, sorry, uh, the values range from zero to 255 because they're all 8-bit. So we need to normalize them to make sure they're all within, you know, zero to one, for example. Okay. Uh, all data pre-processing, nothing, nothing new here. And let's do pretty much the same with X train, uh, I mean, Y train and Y test. Okay, so far, pretty sure you know exactly what's going on. Now, here in the previous video, we used structured data classifier. Now we are using image classifier. Again, the different types that we have are image classifier, image regressor. Uh, image regressor is like, you know how you have MNIST data set where you have handwritten digits and we are converting that image into a number. Okay, that's pretty much it uh, right there. Like if it is hand digit five, it's five. So that's what image uh, regressor is. You have text classifier, text regressor, structured data classifier. We tried this in the last video, structured data regressor, which should be very similar to classifier. If you know how to do one of these, I'm pretty sure you can figure out how to do the uh, rest of them. Okay. And uh, you can look at the documentation here, but let's actually do max trials equal to two. Max trials is the total uh, maximum number of models it's going to try. Even that was slow when I initially started, but hopefully uh, we'll see. Okay, so max trials equal to two, and uh, let's only do one epoch, okay? Uh, again, to prove the point. So first of all, let's go ahead and initiate this. And the next one, X train and Y train. So only 1,000 of these data sets. So let's see if it is fast, if it is slow. Okay, so, okay. So it's doing something right there. Okay. So max trials equals to two, so it just did one. Let's actually change max trials equals to five and see what happens, okay. It isn't as slow as I thought it was, which is a good sign. Again, I'm not using GPU, by the way. You can always install GPU. My GPU is old and I cannot uh, use Python 3.7 and uh, TensorFlow 2.3. Mine only works on TensorFlow 1.4. So I created a new environment, as you saw two videos ago, where we kind of went through this exercise of installing it. Okay, so now it's running trial number one and here is what it's trying to do. Image block one. Uh, it's using ResNet block and then, uh, oh, that's pretty interesting. Then it's doing, uh, uh, we, can, we can print out the model once it's done actually uh, to get more information here, but uh, ResNet 50 right there, uh, that, is, that is very uh, interesting. So anyway, so we are at the end of the first epoch and uh, the accuracy, <laughs> pretty horrible, 9%. So let's see what it picks as the next model and then what type of accuracy we get. So another model, that was faster. Another model, this is faster. So you get the idea. It's just going through one by one. And uh, finally it's like, okay, so exited. Let's see what the best accuracy is. I guess the best accuracy is uh, to, 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 to about 17%, but let's get down here, okay? So now, once we have this model, we, we did fit it, right? 
And now let's go ahead and uh, get the accuracy for the CLF. By the way, the last CLF is the best model that it is suggesting. So now let's go ahead and print out the accuracy. It should be about 17%, right? I mean, that's what I see over there. And oh, I totally forgot that we have a lot of images as part of X test and Y test right there. So that's okay, let it do its thing. Oh, maybe there is a model that's giving us better than 17%. While it's doing that, let's go up and see. So here the accuracy, oh yeah, 27.98, uh, almost 28% right there. So maybe that is the best model it's going to suggest. Okay, and let's keep going up. Is there anything better? No, only 11% accuracy. So it looks like this is the best one. And uh, that seems to be the case right there. Yeah, about 20% right here. Okay, so now let's export this model. When you do clf.export model, it is going to export the best model that it actually got. And I'm gonna capture that as a variable called model. And now let's have a look at it. How does it look like? Okay, so input one is 32 by 32 by three, and then it did normalization. There you go, convolution. I was curious about what it's going to do with the convolution. So it actually gave, uh, uh, suggested a convolutional layer right there with uh, the same dimension, like 30 by 30 by 32 features, and then go down to 28 by 28 by 64 features. And then we have max pooling, meaning no training happening right there. Dropout, flatten, dropout, dense. So uh, if you wanna know what's going on behind the scenes, why is it doing this and all that, I have no clue. I haven't looked at that documentation yet. All I know is, uh, how to use it and what it is doing and maybe in future if I start learning more about what what is the logic behind it I'll definitely create a video for you, but uh, here you go. This is the final model that it's actually recommending go ahead and experiment with uh, uh, Put max trials as 50 epochs as like uh, at least 10 to 20 and then see what uh, is the best model that it's recommending for the type of uh, problem that you're uh, working. So I hope you found these uh, auto Keras tutorials to be useful, at least insightful, and keep an eye on this because it is rapidly developing and evolving. So thank you very much for your attention. Again, please go ahead and subscribe. Hit the subscribe button right now. Thank you.